right, welcome to the webinar, everyone. Um, let's see who we have here today. Um, we've got Jenna from Michigan. Um, we've got Maggie from Australia. Mark from Naperville, Illinois. I'm so excited to have all of you with us today. Um, we have Gina from the sunny San Diego. We love San Diego. All right. So we've got some very exciting information to share with you today, and I'm so happy you're here. Um, we'll be covering how to successfully complete a triathlon without worry or overwhelm. Um, so whether you have some experience in sports already, uh, maybe you're a runner or you've completed some obstacle races, um, you will definitely learn from this presentation and you'll take some valuable info away. Um, so. Uh, first off, I want to thank you for taking the time to join us for this special webinar today. My name is Alexandra, and I work a lot behind the scenes. Um, Peter, our presenter today, is my partner in life and business, and I've personally learned a lot from him. He has inspired me in many different ways in life, especially with pursuing a healthy lifestyle. And he has encouraged me to complete in many triathlons as well as a marathon. Peter is a nine-time Ironman triathlete. He has participated in dozens of triathlons and running events internationally. He has coached hundreds of clients all over the world during the last 14 years. He's a certified USAT triathlon coach, an NCSF sports nutrition specialist, and an NCSF certified personal trainer. And the last three years in a row, Peter was awarded the All World Athlete Award by Ironman Racing themselves. He's an inspiration to many, and watching him inspire and change other people's lives for the better has been a privilege over the years. He's just about my favorite person in the world for many reasons, and this is why he's also the recipient of the Best Husband Ever Award. So let's welcome our presenter, Peter Kajalowski. Yep, I usually make sure this mug is at the top of my resume. Thank you, Alexandra, and welcome everyone. I want to say how much I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us for this special webinar today. I have a lot of exciting information I'll be sharing with you. It's so awesome to have so many of you on the webinar interested in triathlon and improving your lives. By being here, you're taking the first step to reaching that goal and the dream you may have of participating in your first triathlon. So, welcome. All right. So, some housekeeping here first. Again, I just want to thank you guys for taking the time to learn so many valuable lessons that we have to share with you today. We're very excited you're here with us. With that said, since you've taken the time to register for this webinar, let's make sure you take the most out of it. So as we go through the material today, make sure you close any other browsers you have open. Don't get distracted with Facebook. You might even want to turn off your cell phone and really try to get the most out of it. Okay. So let's dive right into the presentation. We will be mainly discussing the four worries that stop aspiring triathletes from competing in their first race, as well as going over the strategies on how to overcome each one of the worries. So if you're on this webinar, I assume you have a strong desire to participate in your first triathlon. Maybe you've already done a sprint triathlon and want to take it to a longer distance. Maybe you're already an existing runner or perhaps have done obstacle races such as Tough Mudder or Spartan races. And you've been thinking about triathlon for a while now as your next step, but you just aren't sure about what direction to take. Uh, you may be really questioning your ability to complete a triathlon or you have some fears that are stopping you from training for one. So today we will address those worries and fears that are standing in your way of crossing that finish line. So I want you to know that I am here today to help you crush those fears and provide tangible strategies that will help you overcome any hesitations and also really share my story with you so that you can see that anything is really possible in life. 
My goal for this webinar is for you to really start believing that anyone is capable of doing triathlon and that you don't have to be an established athlete to commit to one. Okay, so what I want to start off with is sharing my story with you on how I really got to where I am today and what are some of the limiting beliefs that I've had to overcome to succeed in this sport. Growing up, I was a quiet kid, not very athletic. I wasn't really into sports. I kind of minded my own business. Uh, I moved to the US from Poland at the age of 11 and that made things a little worse because now uh, not only was I antisocial, but there was this language barrier where I couldn't really communicate with my new peers. But luckily, I was introduced to sports in junior high and high school. Uh, basically, I was recruited for the basketball team. Uh, I was pretty much the tallest kid in school, so that was the main reason why they recruited me, even though I had no experience in basketball. But athletics and being on the team increased my self-confidence, especially when I started lifting weights while on the basketball team. But I don't want to get off track here. Basically, I discovered helping others early on and became a personal trainer in 2001. I worked at a few different fitness facilities in the Chicago area for about seven years. And in 2008, opened my own gym pretty much in the middle of the recession. Um, so I started to run across the street in the forest preserve, mainly to de-stress. And I learned to enjoy running and quickly progressed through the distances from just a couple miles up to a marathon. I realized I was also simply bored with just lifting weights six times a week for so many years at that point. So I started seeking a greater challenge, a different goal, seeking more adventure in my personal fitness journey. I wanted to have a little more excitement outside of work, find more meaning in exercise. I had a good life, but I didn't feel that I was living up to my highest potential. I was craving personal development and growth, but at the same time, I wasn't into the traditional personal development techniques of seminars, recordings, and books. So triathlon helped me not only fill that void, but propelled me to the next level in life. It gave me an opportunity to meet amazing people. I hired some awesome coaches, met wonderful professional athletes, and got a chance to learn what drives them and makes them successful. One of the coolest feelings in the world was when my idol, Craig Alexander, uh, multiple Ironman world champion, stopped by my gym to share his lessons and strategies to attack his goals that season, uh, which was amazing because he ended up having some of his biggest career highlights just a few months later. For those of you who follow the sport, you may remember in 2012, he won both the world championship titles at the 70.3 distance, as well as the full Ironman in Kona. Not only that, but he was the oldest ever champion in Kona, and he set the course record, which was, I think, 15 years old at the time. Not only that, a few months later, he competed in another Ironman in Australia and went under eight hours there, really dominated the field. And the cool thing was to really earlier that year talk, uh, hear him speak about his goals. He literally told us that his goals were to win both championships. Obviously, he wasn't planning on you know some of the details like being the oldest one to do it or setting a course record, but his goals were to win both titles, and that's what he did later. So basically, I learned from him and other professionals that they couldn't do what they do if it wasn't for the support of their family, but more importantly, the coaches they've hired over the years. Although they are in the spotlight, the media and the fans give them all the attention, they made it clear that they would not be as successful without their mentors and support team. Here are a few other world champs. I had an opportunity of meeting Chrissy Wellington, as well as Miranda. These two girls basically dominated the Ironman scene in Kona pretty much the last decade, although Chrissy Wellington has already retired from the sport of a triathlon. But basically, if you meet enough of these people, all you want to do is take your success to the next level. So that motivated me to start living in alignment with my values and purpose. I took their advice and surrounded myself with mentors as well. 
I hired coaches and that very quickly propelled me forward to achieve my full potential. As a result, I have completed dozens of races, uh, but most importantly, I have been fortunate enough to cross the Ironman finish line nine times now. And I must say, hearing those amazing words is special every single time. Uh, those who are familiar, basically when you cross the finish line, they'll yell out your name. Peter Kozielewski, you are an Ironman. And basically it's surreal every single time. Um, so I did Ironman Cosmo three times, Louisville and Kentucky twice, Arizona twice, Coeur d'Alene and Idaho once, Maryland once, uh, all amazing destinations and wonderful races. But basically, investing in myself was key and so was finding support and encouragement. Having someone to evaluate your strengths and weaknesses, aside from giving you structure, is key. A coach can help you determine what the appropriate and achievable goal, goal is for you. If you've maybe done running races or an obstacle race or a color run, but are seeking a new challenge, it may be difficult to pursue triathlon because a new sport can be intimidating. If you don't have a mentor or guidance along the way, it can feel overwhelming. But whether you seek out help or not, the key is to set realistic goals. Uh, that don't set you up for failure. Triathlon is so much more than medals and finisher t-shirts though. It truly is a lifestyle. It really changed my life by opening up my eyes as I traveled to some of the most amazing destinations and asking myself, what else is possible? Cozumel, for example, was one of those places. Uh, I originally signed up for Ironman Cozumel as a backup plan to my first Ironman in Louisville. That's how intimidated I was by the distance. Uh, basically, my first 100 mile bike ride uh, in training, uh, basically I suffered a little bit. It was 50 miles out, 50 back, and I would say about mile 70 or so, I was mentally and physically done. I was just so drained, I had no more energy. And that was very discouraging because, you know, just a couple months, I was supposed to compete in an Ironman. And I had already committed to raising funds for charity at that point, Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. I told all my clients, friends, family, they all pretty much started donating and really committing to, to my goal as well. And I was very discouraged because at that point, I didn't think I could do it. So as I freaked out that day, I basically got home and registered for Cosimo. This way I would have an opportunity to redeem myself three months later, uh, just in case I didn't complete uh, Louisville. Luckily I was able to do both, so that worked out well. But that first long bike ride basically was a huge nutrition lesson for me that day, and now I'm grateful for that experience, no matter how unpleasant it was at the time. But we all learn from mistakes, right? Maybe so, but they don't have to be our own. Had I reached out for help sooner, the process would have been a lot easier. But the positive thing is that now I can help others achieve their goal. All right, so competing in triathlon taught me to invest in experiences rather than things. And I decided to explore other parts of the country through racing. Here is a half marathon in New York. Uh, this ended up being a meaningful destination, not only because Alex and I did a race there together, but also we ended up getting engaged right there in Times Square. So that was really, really cool. Uh, in 2013, we found ourselves in Arizona and racing Ironman Arizona was so impactful that it truly changed our life completely. Uh, I felt such a connection to the nature, the landscape, the mountains, that I felt nothing but gratitude, especially while cycling out in the desert. Returning to the freezing Chicago after the race was quite a contrast, and uh, I think a seed was planted subconsciously because two years later, I did that race again, but this time as a resident. That's how impactful this experience was. We literally made the home of Ironman, Arizona, our home as well. All right, 
But enough about me. Uh, I believe that if we were to meet at another webinar six months from now, I'm certain that every single one of you could be a triathlete and most of you could probably be Ironman finishers. Wouldn't that be awesome? How cool would that be? Now imagine yourself crossing that finish line and just think how amazing it would feel. If it's a desire you've felt for a while now, you owe it to yourself to finally have that experience. Never give up on a dream just because of the time it will take to accomplish it. Remember, the time will pass anyway. Ignite that spark inside you and just get after your goal no matter how big or small. Even the smallest goals have the potential of growth and taking you somewhere unexpected, possibly to an achievement of a lifetime. All right, it sounds great, you might be thinking, but what about the fears? All right, so let's get back to why we're here today. In order for you to overcome some of the worries you may have about doing your first triathlon, you need to identify where you fall as far as those four categories. After working with hundreds of clients, I've noticed that those who wanted to complete a triathlon were held back by either one of the categories or maybe even all four. I would say that majority of the people that I've worked with, for sure over 50%, uh, initially did not take action because they were terrified of the technical aspects of either open water swimming or just the fear of falling off the bike. And I'll explain how to get over those fears and turn them into an advantage. The second largest area was self-belief. Uh, many simply don't believe that they are capable of doing an event like a triathlon. They immediately put it off to the side and believe that it is for others, maybe those who are more athletic. And as we go through the presentation today, we will dive in a bit deeper as to why this is completely untrue and why anyone can do a triathlon. The third worry is really the investment associated with racing fees, uh, gear and, and travel, for example. And I will teach you today how you can actually not lose money investing in unnecessary gear and where to get the most value for your dollar and some strategies to save a few bucks. Lastly, I would say that those who really want to do a triathlon don't follow through because of the overwhelm and not really having the right system of fitting it into their busy schedule. So I'll go over some ways that you can learn to save money and become more disciplined with training while juggling work and family. We're going to go over how you can start making shifts to get you closer to participating in your first triathlon and how to overcome those worries. And I hope to encourage you today that anything is possible in life if you put your mind to it. Okay, so fear of swimming and cycling. Here, I pretty much really believe in progress over perfection. Uh, when I started out, I assumed I couldn't swim, and I decided that I even hate it. And I'm not sure why that's something I would say, because I haven't really tried it yet. I would literally tell people, yeah, I hate swimming. And it was a strange attitude to have, because I haven't tried it yet. But you have to be very careful, because the story you tell yourself over and over becomes true, eventually. We must be very careful with what thoughts we allow in. How many times in your life have you told yourself, I can't do this, I'm not good enough, it's not for me? You have to be able to ident identify these negative thoughts and override them with positive ones. You have to face the fear but start small. Tread water for a few minutes and then try to get across the pool and take it from there. It's kind of what I had to do. I literally had to start with treading the water first. I wasn't patient enough to learn how to swim freestyle. I went to the pool a few times just to figure out how to breaststroke. A year later, I found myself doing an Ironman. But the key was taking action. So action creates desire, and if your desire is strong enough, it will overpower the fear. Also, if you're starting out in triathlon, it's very beneficial to start with a pool swim race first. Obviously, that's where you're training and that's where you're most comfortable so you don't have to worry about current, uh, a group of people being in your way or just dealing with, with the elements. All right, the fear of cycling. 
that's definitely a valid concern because unfortunately we see a lot of accidents lately uh, between cyclists and, and vehicles. But you want to avoid the high traffic times of the day, like 8 to 10 a.m. as well as 4 to 6 p.m. But that will usually force you to go either earlier or later. And now there is this problem of it either, either still being dark or getting dark already. So you want to wear reflective gear. This way you can be visible to drivers from far away. You want to attach lights to your bike for that same reason, front and back, and you can literally be spotted from over a mile away. Also, you want to plan out your route to avoid busy intersections, stop lights, stop signs. And to be honest, the most important tip here, I think, is take some of your training indoors on a trainer or even a spin bike. Uh, that's what I did especially when getting ready for a late season race like the November Ironman in Cozumel or Arizona, I would have to do some of my longest rides pretty much indoors uh, because it was already cold in Chicago in October or November when I had to do a three, four, five hour bike ride. But basically, if you have to ride for three hours, let's say, and you do it indoors, you're literally working and putting in effort, spinning, turning over nonstop for three hours. It really makes your workout efficient and it's basically just higher quality training because you, you're not stopping at lights or taking it easy on a downhill. You don't have to worry about getting ready and putting layers on. So really it saves time and it makes your workout so much more efficient. Okay, number two was lack of self-belief and the key here is to stop comparison we start to mistakenly compare ourselves to some of the fittest athletes like the pros after all they're not only fit but wear tight superhero looking kits designed to save seconds and they own top of the line gear and it's the same pretty much with the elite age groupers uh, that visual alone makes us second guess our own abilities simply because we feel like we don't look the part and that makes us believe that we can't accomplish what they're accomplishing. You want to start small. So divide the overall goal into small achievable steps. Focus on your daily workouts rather than the race itself. And you want to do that in training and racing as well. Uh, when I'm about to begin an Ironman, I don't tell myself, oh man, the sun is about to come up and I won't finish until after sunset. No, I focus on the tiny goals. Uh, on the swim, I'll just think about getting to the first buoy. Then I'm thinking about getting to the turnaround buoy. On the way back as I'm swimming, I'm already visualizing my uh, T1 or the first transition, where I'm going to peel my wetsuit, when am I going to put on my shoes, and so on. On the bike, I'm really kind of taking it 10 miles at a time and focusing on nutrition more so than anything. For example, drink water every 15 minutes, take in calories every 30 minutes, maybe take salt every hour. Uh, on the run, I'm really just focusing on getting from aid station to aid station. I never think of the whole 26 miles because that would just crush me mentally. Another tip would be to find a mentor, a running buddy, coach, joining a tri club. You want to have someone help you mold your training plan into your lifestyle because the better it integrates into your schedule, the more achievable it will be. People fear what they don't know or when they don't plan. So if you execute the right strategy, the self-doubt will go away. And having a proper plan will give you clarity and eliminate the doubts as well. But a little fear is good because it suggests that you have respect for that distance that you're preparing for. And if you respect it, the chances are you're not going to cut any corners and you will prepare for it properly. Volunteering, I would say, is also key. Being a volunteer will help you see a race firsthand at what you can expect without the pressure of actually racing. You will be able to really be in the middle of the action, have help someone else have an amazing day. You will learn all the ins and outs of the race without the actual pressure of having to race itself. Plus, you'll see a lot of interesting people. You're going to see people who are twice your age, twice your size, who are finishing this thing. And that will really motivate you and encourage you to do it yourself. Okay, so this is Gina, uh, a girl that I've been training for a while now, and her goal was to work on her overall fitness. She had no desire to do a triathlon at all. And I 
couple months into training together, uh, she basically decided to do a sprint simply because I was already competing in triathlon, so that interested her. Uh, she had a great time with the sprint and then decided to do an Olympic. Once she did a, an Olympic, it kind of created this motivation and desire to go longer. And basically the following year, that momentum drove her to finishing a couple 70.3s. And this past November, actually, she came out here to Arizona and we did Ironman Arizona together. And it was amazing. But the coolest thing about her was during the race here in uh, Arizona to see her daughters cheering for her and being proud of, of their mom. And you can see in this photo how proud they are. So the impact that she's making in their lives is, is just amazing. And basically, Gina became an inspiration to others in her immediate circle. Her friends, family, just started going to her for fitness and wellness advice. So she's really impacting the lives of those around her as well, simply by you know setting and achieving her goals. All right, so number three is that the sport can be too expensive. Uh, it can be, but it doesn't have to be, especially when you're first starting out. My first uh, sprint triathlon, I actually borrowed a bike from a friend. It was a hybrid, a bike that's not intended even for racing. Uh, and not until after that first sprint did I look into purchasing a bike. And that's when I found this bicycle you see here in this photo online uh, for 200 bucks. It was a heavy aluminum frame, GMC Denali. No aero bars, no clipping, paddles, basically kind of bare bones, just the way you see it. But you know what? It worked perfectly. Uh, I did my first Olympic on it, my first half Ironman. This picture was actually taken at uh, half Ironman in Austin, which is the first 70.3 I did. And I actually completed my very first Ironman on this bike as well. So as you see, you don't have to invest thousands into your first bike. Uh, owning the top of the line gear is pointless unless the engine or you is really fine-tuned and in tip-top shape. All right, so some ways to save money. You want to start out in a pool swim or a first race that has a pool swim or in a warm climate, obviously in the summer, and basically that will ensure that you will not need a wetsuit. That alone can be a fairly big ticket item, anywhere between 200 up to even 1200 bucks, depending on what brand you go with. You do wanna hold off on a new bike purchase. See if you could use the bike you already own. There are tons of people doing their first sprints on mountain bikes even. Or just borrow a bike from a friend, kind of like I did. Uh, you wanna find a local race, so you have no travel expenses, like uh, hotel fees or uh, shipping fees for your equipment and a big one I would say is check with check with your company for health reimbursements I've had many clients take advantage of this uh, a lot of employers would reimburse my clients for either coaching health services uh, gym memberships and they understand the benefits of you being healthy and fewer sick days and increased productivity at work Another one that could be obvious is reduced dining out. And this is a double benefit because by eating at home, you can prepare healthier meals that will support your training and, and recovery and also be more affordable. A lot of people that think that eating healthy is more expensive, that's totally not true. And we could do it, give it its own presentation. All right, so number four is busy schedule and overwhelm. Uh, the key here is to have a strategy in place. Without finding the right race and having a plan of attack, you may be wasting your efforts training. Thinking through your workouts and creating a schedule will ensure your success. Do you want to give up mindless activities? An average American spends five hours a day on TV and social media. So even though you are already an actor, active person and it sounds like you're not in this category simply because you're on this webinar you can still cut down some of that time uh, if you cut this time in half you will all of a sudden have time to train it, it can be that simple for for some of you also you can utilize the time by multitasking for example you can listen to podcasts audiobooks for example when you're doing those longer indoor rides 
Uh, including family into training can also be very beneficial. You wanna bring your kids to your workouts when possible. It won't happen every time, but you can push a stroller with your child on a run. You can bring them to watch you swim if they're old enough or obviously use the fitness center daycare. Uh, since you already are an amazing role model to them, think about how them being involved will impact their lives in the future. Just like in Gina's example, making fitness part of their life from a young age where they won't have to relearn any bad habits. Babysitting swap. You want to think about uh, alternating babysitting with maybe a spouse or a friend. Let's say both of you sign up for the same race. Maybe you can do your long training sessions on the weekend together, but maybe your swim days or gym days during the week, you could alternate where one of you is swimming, the other one is watching the kids, and you swap the following day. Again, action creates desire, and don't wait for the desire to come to you because it will never come. Start now, and you will create more time by eliminating procrastination. Sometimes we tend to take an hour just getting ready in the morning to just getting our stuff together and head out to the pool. So a lot of my clients will have literally three or four different gym bags ready with the equipment they'll need for that particular workout. So if they go, are going swimming, they will grab that swim bag and not even have to think twice about it because everything's already prepared. Or they will lay their clothes out on the floor the night before if they're going cycling or running. So when you get up in the morning, you literally trip over your clothes and you kind of have to put it on and you can just get out the door. And this way you eliminate all that thinking and just are more productive. All right, so this is Chuck and I trained him for many years. Uh, he's a high level executive, a partner at a law firm. Uh, he leads a team of young attorneys, pretty much half his age. They're in their 20s and 30s. He's in his 50s. And he actually also commutes to work like three hours a day. He takes the train from the suburbs of Chicago into the city and obviously back. And his schedule is very demanding. And he's able to balance everything from family, his kids, to his demanding career, the travel and training for triathlon. He, triathlons. He's done multiple sprints, Olympics. He did the 70.3 in Racine, uh, Wisconsin. The picture on the left is him and Alex after a sprint. On the right, that's him and one of his sons in Wisconsin after the 70.3 that he completed. Uh, this is Rhea, and she's a mom of three, and she's done multiple 70.3s now and started out with with sprints, like everyone else. Uh, on the left, that's her and I after we completed uh, 70.3 in Muncie, Indiana. On the right, that's her and her boyfriend in Michigan after Steelhead 70.3. And the cool thing about Rhea is that she, she actually was single when she started out in triathlon and she found new love in that tri community. Just being involved in training and going to races, she found a new life partner. And how cool is that? She never really, that wasn't her goal, but it's just what happened. All right, so we're going to bring Alex back in. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you, Peter, for going over some of these great strategies to help us overcome those worries that can really paralyze us from taking action to realize our goals and desires. So I want to mention one important aspect here. As you go through your fitness journey, wherever you currently are, Remember not to put off your desires and dreams to the side because they're in your head for a reason. So each and one of you has a reason as to why you're on this webinar today. And I want to applaud you for sticking around this long into the presentation because it shows you want to reach another level in your journey. Um, and as some of you may remember from school, the Maslow's hierarchy of needs is a pyramid that shows us that self-actualization at the top level is an important part of our journey um, to really fully reaching our highest potential. Um, we all have careers, jobs, families and friends and basic psychological needs that are being met. Um, but one of the truest and greatest joys in life is living a life filled with purpose and knowing that you're inspiring others along the way. 
So for us, I feel that triathlon allows us to fulfill that part of ourselves that brings happiness and excitement and joy and a sense of adventure as we travel all over the country to do triathlons. Um, we knew we wanted to experience our life to the fullest and racing triathlons and running has allowed us for a more meaningful life. And I'm so happy um, that we have enabled our clients to also reach their highest potential in life as well. So um, I'd like for you to take a moment now and think about what actions and behaviors you could start implementing tomorrow based on what you've learned during the presentation today. So if you want to do your first triathlon but haven't done one yet, or if you've done a couple, but maybe your goal is to do a longer distance or have a faster result, what actions could you take? What behaviors could you start changing? And how would this really um, change your life if you took actions on what Peter has shared today? Could be maybe going to the pool more often or finding a training partner, finding a mentor or a supporting community. So think about what that action could be for you. And also remember that committing to yourself is really um, the goal here. So anyone who is willing to commit to themselves can truly complete a triathlon. And this is really going to help you take it to the next level. If you start to implement these strategies that you learned today, and if you truly commit to yourself. If you don't commit to yourself, then you're stuck with the results that you've already had, which you're probably not too happy with because you wouldn't be here. Say yes right now if you commit to making these shifts and taking action to get you closer to completing your first or next triathlon. If not now, then when? When and how do you plan to achieve those desires and dreams to get across that finish line? Now. If you need a little help with the when and the how, I want to help out. So everyone who is here will receive a gift, which is an opportunity for a $200 phone call with me that is entirely complimentary. You and I will sit down and talk about what is really getting in your way. You'll get the opportunity to clarify exactly what distance triathlon you should be training for, what time phase you should be looking at, and how to move forward in a way that is aligned with your current lifestyle and schedule. Now, the question is, why am I doing this? Why would I spend the time uh, doing a complimentary call with all of you? The reason is that I love introducing new athletes to triathlon and helping them achieve great results. Uh, the sport of triathlon has changed my life completely, and I feel like I just want to share that with as many people as I can because I know how it can impact their lives as well. It's, it's really easy for me to have a quick conversation and evaluate where you stand and what your next step should look like. And the other thing is that if you love it, you may ask to become a client. And I look forward to helping awesome people with their triathlon goals. I love being able to see the long-term transformation. So getting to do that is really fun for me. I've done so many of these and I really love being able to see you stepping out of your comfort zone to achieve something you've never done. So I encourage you to apply for your own complimentary phone call. All right, so go to calendly.com slash the trihub to book your call. I may not be able to do every single phone call, so I encourage you to jump on right now because we have a lot of people on this webinar and I don't have that many spots available in my calendar. So if you are ready, jump on and schedule your call right now. It will just take a minute and we're going to walk through exactly what your approach should be to completing your first triathlon or the next one. And again, it's 100% complimentary. You are going to get some personalized advice on how to get to the finish line of your first triathlon or perhaps how to go about your strategy with a longer distance if you've already completed one. You will get clarity about what is standing in your way and stopping you from taking it to the next level and what's preventing you from really moving forward. I'm going to pass the baton back to Alex and just make sure you go to calendly.com 
slash the trihub and get on your free call. I just love being here and I want to wish all of you the very best of success in your triathlon journey and I will hopefully talk with you all soon. Thank you, Peter. And um, as Peter had said, um, there are only a handful of spots available, not enough to go around for everybody. Um, but if you do hurry over in your browser right now and go to calendly.com slash the trihub, um, there have been hundreds of athletes who have certainly benefited from Peter's advice on these calls. Um, so make sure to take advantage of this complimentary call valued at $200. Um, so um, open up your browser and type in calendly.com slash the trihub and reserve your spot. Um, I want to thank you again for being here with us. Um, we wish you a successful racing season and we will hopefully hear from you soon or we'll see you on another webinar. Thanks guys. Thank you.